Today we're talking about a G.I. Joe who showed up toward the end of the 1980s, an armor specialist who loves rough sports and tough steel. Today is all about Backstop. Robert Levin was born in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. He played junior league hockey growing up, but after injuring too many players, the Levins were forced to move to Detroit, Michigan in the United States to escape the throngs of angry parents. Levin knew how to throw hands on the ice, and so he parlayed this skill into boxing competition fighting in Golden Gloves matches, and then was a two-year undefeated reigning champion of his high school wrestling team, but mostly because others were too scared to get on the mat with him and actually wrestle. Levin then had a brief career smashing himself around on the demolition derby circuit. It was after that that Levin decided to join the United States Army, specializing in armor, 19 kilo MOS, and mechanized infantry, 11 Mike. That was all rolled into 11 Bravo, and now 19 Charlie. 19C is part of the armor branch. In 2017, his role was updated to be Mobile Support Equipment Operator, with a primary and secondary MOS of Armored Vehicle Driver and Mechanized Infantry, respectively. For training, he would have had to go to Fort Benning in Georgia to train with the 1st Battalion's 81st Armor Regiment in the Maneuver Center of Excellence and Armor School for 15 weeks of one-station unit training. It's here that he honed his skills as both a mounted and dismounted warfighter. Later, the G.I. Joe team needed a new specialist driver for a vehicle they'd rolled out for field operations, dubbed the Persuader. He also earned the nickname Backstop, a name that applies both to his hockey experience and his role in mounted infantry combat. According to the Ultimate Guide to G.I. Joe, he was almost called a few things, Boxcar, No Goff, or Hardball. So what is the Persuader? The Persuader was designed by Hasbro designer Guy Cassidy, and interestingly, you can actually see his last name hidden on the fender just above the forward axle in the serial number. This vehicle is also known as the Deadeye due to the large sticker that goes on the aft portion of the turret. A year after its release, the Persuader was painted all black and Night Force used him as their Nightstorm vehicle. In an interview at the website 3D Joe's, Cassidy also says that Deadeye was a nod to his father who served on a Coast Guard cutter in World War II. When his shipmates jumped in the drink, Cassidy's father would man the guns to shoot sharks, earning him the nickname Deadeye. Interestingly, a former executive at Asbro who is credited as one of the fathers of G.I. Joe named Don Levine, whose name is not too dissimilar from that of Backstop's government name, worked with the CIA on a PSYOP codenamed Devil Eyes to make an action figure of none other than Osama bin Laden to distribute in Pakistan and Afghanistan. Per the Persuader's Action Force TAC profile, the Persuader is not actually a tank, but an armored fighting vehicle. It was designed to be an intermediary between the Mahler main battle tank and the Havoc ICV or infantry combat vehicle. The front is sloped to allow the engine block to sit forward of the driver, providing additional protection while the slope itself allows the Persuader to prevent a smaller target profile head-on. It also features hydro-pneumatic suspension, which you'll notice on the actual vehicle in person given how the wheels and axles are split into two sets. The Action Force version is not armed with laser weapons. That one features an auto-loaded L7 105mm cannon, similar to the one you could find on Centurion and Leopard 1 tanks, along with other AFVs, like some configurations of the AMX-10 RC that I'm going to mention again in a moment. This main gun is complemented by a huge 25mm chain gun that can rapidly put 500 rounds on smaller things like soft targets and technicals. Cassidy says some of his inspiration came from either a Russian or North Korean wedge-shaped vehicle that was carrying a nuclear warhead, something you'd maybe seen on TV at the time. The Persuader was originally to be a Cobra vehicle, but again, per Cassidy, marketing got involved and it became a G.I. Joe vehicle. Perhaps he's referring to the S-300 missile system, something that's even being used to this day, even in Ukraine where F-35s from the 388th are tracking them and marking targets from the NATO side, or perhaps this USSR one-round rocket launcher affixed to a PT-76 amphibious light tank chassis. Stylistically though, with its sharply angular design, I'd put it much closer to the Third Reich's special purpose vehicle, 234, codenamed Puma, an armored car used by Warmock forces. It even has the push bar on the front. There's also the Moag Piranha 10x10 ACV that has the 105 5mm main gun configuration, and then the AMX-10 RC, which can come with a light modular 105mm gun. Here, RC stands for Ruse Cannon, which translates to wheeled gun. A company from Versailles, France called Nexter was also developing the Vextra 105, an 8x8 anti-tank armored vehicle that also came with a 105mm main gun configuration. G.I. Joe's US version of the Persuader boasted a monopulse driver-operated laser cannon in place of the Hughes 25mm cannon and the Heatwave 10 megawatt armor 
armor-piercing laser cannon, along with half a dozen Dart 250-pound SAM-37 missiles. In Marvel Comics and Larry Hama's A Real American Hero comic book series, Backstop first appeared in issue 64. He was new to the Utah base and followed an awe striker to the barracks in his persuader. They came in with a wave of new Joes who got there ahead of their files, but luckily at least carrying their transfer papers. Still, their clearance level was not approved for most of the base, including the sublevels. Issue 68 features the Persuader being airdropped from a Herc, but let's back up to catch up on the story here. Cobra was in Frozen Land, assisting Prime Minister Wolf with repelling the Reindeer Hunters' revolt, and, unbeknownst to him, installing paranoia-inducing radio wave broadcasters which were hidden in a slew of terror drones. He knew about the terror drones, but not the radio waves. In a case of bad timing, the Joes were supposed to be in-country, inspecting one of their testing and research stations at the same time. When the Joes flew their Wild Bill and Slipstream piloted transport plane to the Frozen Land International Airport, a cluster of his tanks fired on them and almost prevented the plane from landing and offloading. They were able to land, but Cobra was blocking the runway for takeoff. Hawk had the aft door lowered and backstop and cover grill mounted on the Persuader flew right out of the back of the plane to make contact and engage. They were quickly supported by an Ostriker and a Snowcat as the main Cobra line rolled closer. The big transport plane did a 180 and was rolling right up the tarmac right behind the Joe's armored phalanx. Backstop had Covergirl fire the main gun which took out a his tank just to Baroness's left. This caused a collision and the Cobra Battalion broke left which made a pocket for the Joe's to punch through, enough for the four fans of freedom to get wheels up. Hawk had his armored assets regroup at Backstop's Persuader so they could get off the snowy plane and find some cover. Meanwhile, Baroness reported to Cobra Commander that she had the Joe team on the run and so he ordered his fleet of Mambas be scrambled immediately to provide air support. The insidious sound waves emanating from the terror drones were starting to affect the G.I. Joe team. Cobra was protected because they were wearing ear protection. So the Joes began arguing while being disoriented and they ended up finding themselves exposed right out in the middle of the flat ice shelf. When Cobra Commander's Mamba was shot down with a Sam, he ordered the column of maggots to fire for effect and the barrage landed right in front of the Joes, breaking up and weakening the ice. It slowed them up, but it also meant that Cobra could only pursue with their lighter wolves. Hawk's Ostriker was taken out just as Covergirl fired another laser shot at the wolves. Baroness Armored Cav had the Joes pinned and on her order, they launched a salvo of rockets at the last two G.I. Joe vehicles, surely to destroy them. But just as the rounds flew in close, Battle Force 2000 showed up, Deus Ex Machina style, and strafed the rockets into oblivion. They were saved just in time and then were able to inform the PM about the true nature of the hardware and installations he was buying. In 1989, Backstop starred in a story called Knights in Armor, which was published in Action Force Monthly 15, and then in the US as European Missions 15, the last issue of the series. These issues featured the Persuader with Backstop in the driver's seat prominently on the cover, drawn by Stuart Johnson and John Burns. Backstop was deployed with Falcon's team to an oil emirate in the Arabian Gulf to engage Cobra, who'd taken over an oil terminal with an entire armored infantry division, with the intent to sabotage the field. For this mission, Falcon had Backstop and his Persuader spearheading the ground assault. He'd be followed by a vanguard of Cross Country's Havocs, followed by Heavy Metal and the Mauler tanks. Since he was on point, Falcon joined Backstop and the Persuader, taking the gunner steed up top. Backstop and Falcon pushed forward through the barrage of artillery fire exploding all around them. Backstop stopped their ICV while Falcon used the Persuader's night sight to fire a white tungsten carbide round, which took out one of Cobra's artillery emplacements. This was all a distraction while Tunnel Rat's team infiltrated the oil facility via an underground oil tunnel. Falcon took out a maggot tank and its crew before linking back up with the others. And then, many, many years later, Backstop and his persuader showed up at the ceremony to honor the recently KIA Snake Eyes. And then, beginning with issue 270, when Command was spinning up a rescue op to get Sean Collins, aka Throwdown, back from Cobra Commander in Laura 343 in the Cobra-controlled town of Springfield, Backstop was with Heavy Metal and Rampage, directing traffic in the staging area to get other equipment up the lifts and topside, but that was halted when the mission wasn't officially sanctioned by the Pentagon. When they did get going, though, Backstop didn't drive his Persuader. This time, he was the driver for the Mauler MBT. They drove it to Springfield on a flatbed Hemet. But then he drove the transport truck carrying the Mobat instead. Once they got on scene, a firefight broke out in the parking lot of the Springfield Community Center, and due to the timing of his release, Backstop only appeared in animated form in TV commercials for the Persuader. Actually, that's not entirely true. 
He did make an appearance in the G.I. Joe Operation Blackout video game where he was voiced by Keith Silverstein. In 1987, Backstop's first action figure debuted, packaged exclusively with the Persuader. He got a big helmet whose chin guard is much more pronounced than most, something more akin to a dirt bike helmet, specifically an enduro helmet. He was also armed with a silver Ruger Blackhawk revolver, and he came in an interesting colorway, painted gray, green, red, orange, and white. The version that Plasterama released for the Persuader was actually a champion target shooter with a diverse set of firearms in a youth shooting league instead of hockey, though here he was still from Canada. In 1989, Hasbro UK had a contest for the Action Force line where the prizes of a Persuader went to 10 winners. To enter, you had to answer three questions, one of which was, what is Backstop's real name? His next action figure came in 2017 and was an exclusive to the G.I. Joe convention that year in Florida. He now came with what was billed on the card art as a working fabric parachute. This is supported by the bit on that version of his file card which says that when the BF-2000 team needed to infiltrate a Cobra laser weapons base in Canada, they called in Backstop to parachute into the location. And to sum up Backstop, we again turn to his file card which says, More than just one of the toughest soldiers on either side of the 49th parallel, he possesses a natural ability to drive anything and has intimate knowledge of the often frozen and treacherous terrain Cobra has infested. And so Backstop continues to be a part of the G.I. Joe team, whether it reserve status, on base duty, or out in the field. So we ask ourselves, where will Backstop show up again? Well, we'll have to wait and see, which means that's a wrap on this one, my friends. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.